This video is to help you revise bacteria and please note that this is an updated video. I wanted to improve on the last video and also I've looked at more recent exam papers and marking schemes and wanted to reflect that in this new video. So bacteria belong to the kingdom Monera. Bacteria are these unicellular organisms, so they're made up of only one cell and they are prokaryotic. That means that they do not have a membrane bound nucleus and they don't have membrane bound organelles such as mitochondria and chloroplasts. So let's take a look at bacterial cell structure. So the structure of a bacterium and be able to draw a very basic diagram yourself. Practice that. So bacteria have a cell wall and inside the cell wall is the cell membrane and located in the cytoplasm of that cell is the bacterial DNA. It's in the form of this looped chromosome. Also floating in the cytoplasm are those ribosomes that make proteins and ribosomes in bacteria are smaller than those in eukaryotic cells. There is also a circular loop of DNA known as a plasmid and very often this plasmid contains the gene for antibiotic resistance and is used as a vector in genetic engineering. Some bacteria have extra features. They may have a slime capsule for protection or these tail-like structures called flagella used for movement. Bacteria and oxygen. So some bacteria need oxygen and others don't. For example, obligate aerobes. These are bacteria that must have oxygen for survival. They are aerobic bacteria. They respire aerobically. Then there are obligate anaerobes. These cannot respire in the presence of oxygen. They cannot tolerate oxygen. Then there's facultative anaerobes. They can use oxygen if present, but they can respire anaerobically. Bacteria are generally one of three shapes. They're either spherical, rod-shaped or spiral. We used to refer to spherical as round-shaped and in some books this is still the case. However, if you look at recent marking schemes, it's important that you say that they are spherical-shaped or coccus for one or cocci for the plural. Nutrition. This is the way in which an organism will obtain and use its food and this applies to bacteria as well. What is their mode of nutrition? So bacteria can be either autotrophic or heterotrophic. Autotrophic means that they can make their own food from inorganic substances and heterotrophic means that they cannot make their own food and they must take in food made by another organism. So when we think of autotrophic bacteria, we're thinking about where they get the energy to make their own food from. Chemosynthetic bacteria, they gain energy from chemical reactions. Examples would be the nitrifying bacteria in the nitrogen cycle. Photosynthetic bacteria, they use light energy to make their own food. Examples would be purple sulfur bacteria found in hot springs. So when we consider heterotrophic bacteria, we think of parasitic and saprophytic bacteria. Parasitic bacteria live on or in a living host and they usually cause that host harm. And then there are saprophytic bacteria which feed on dead organic matter. And these play a hugely important role as decomposers. Reproduction. Bacteria reproduce asexually. This means that there's only one parent and no gametes involved and it results in the production of genetic clones. The method of reproduction is known as binary fission and this is really important that you remember it will come up on an exam. So what does binary fission entail? Well first of all the DNA is replicated so the bacterial chromosome there is another copy produced and the cell elongates, it gets longer. So the replicated DNA or the bacterial chromosomes move to either end of this brand new longer cell and gradually the cell wall and cell membrane will grow inwards eventually nipping off to form two identical bacterial cells. Bacteria are pretty resilient and they can survive in very adverse conditions and they do this by the formation of endospores. So endospores are formed when conditions are harsh, for example, there's a lack of water. So how is an endosporum formed? Well, first of all, the bacterial chromosome, the DNA, replicates and this chromosome, together with a little of the cytoplasm, pinches away and it gets surrounded by this multi-layered wall structure. It loses a lot of its water and this slows down its metabolism and eventually is released from the mother's cell when it bursts. Bacterial endospores are very resilient and can lay dormant for very long periods of time and when conditions are favourable, they will germinate and become a viable bacterium again. So what are the factors that affect bacterial growth? In other words, what will make the bacteria grow and what will prevent them from growing? Firstly, temperature is an important factor and each different species of bacteria has an optimal temperature range at which they grow best. If the temperature goes too much above the optimal temperature range, well then you risk denaturation of enzymes. Oxygen is another factor. Some bacteria are aerobic and some are anaerobic. pH is another factor. Most bacteria like a neutral pH However, there are bacteria that can tolerate very acidic or very alkaline conditions. 
Another factor is external solute concentration. Remember from osmosis the principles of sugaring and salting in food preservation. So if you place bacteria into a very salty or sugary solution, water will move from their cytoplasm towards that sugary or salty solution. And very few bacteria can survive that when their cytoplasm shrivels away. Pressure is another factor and it all depends on the particular type of bacterium. Some can tolerate extremes of pressure whereas others cannot. Bacteria can reproduce very quickly and the bacterial growth curve is a very important graph. It's showing how bacterial numbers increase and decrease over time. You need to be able to reproduce this graph from scratch yourself, label it correctly and discuss what's happening at each stage and give reasons for it. Firstly, you have to know how to label the axes. The most important thing to remember is that on the y-axis, the number of bacteria, because we're discussing such huge numbers of bacteria, we have to use the logarithmic scale and that's really important. And then along the x-axis is time. So we commence the graph with the lag stage. This is where there are no real increase in numbers because the bacteria are adapting to their surroundings. So then we have the log stage and this is where the bacteria are reproducing at their maximum rate. There's no real competition and there's very good or optimal conditions. Next we have the stationary phase and this is where the numbers don't increase or decrease. They're pretty much static and this is because the numbers being produced are matched by those dying off. And at this stage you're starting to see more competition and toxins building up. Then we have the decline phase. This is where there's a marked decrease in bacterial numbers. So competition, buildup of toxins and lack of nutrients are possible reasons for this. Finally, we have the survival stage and this is where a small number will survive by forming endospores. We also have to be able to discuss and give examples of beneficial and harmful bacteria and discuss the impact they have on the economy. So beneficial bacteria, for example, E. coli, is used in genetic engineering to produce insulin. Lactobacillus is used in yogurt production. And we have those saprophytic bacteria used in nutrient recycling. So what about the harmful bacteria? Well, most importantly, we have the disease-causing bacteria, those pathogenic bacteria. Those, for example, that cause TB, and this is a huge problem in agriculture. We also have E. coli, which is pathogenic. Then you have salmonella that can cause food poisoning. And finally, you have those bacteria that cause food spoilage and decay, which is a huge problem economically. Antibiotics. These are chemicals that kill or inhibit the growth of bacteria. And that is the 2022 higher level marking scheme definition. Please note that you have to revise antibiotic resistance and to link it to natural selection. So there's another video on that, so please study that. So please note that bioprocessing is an additional section of this chapter. It's really important that you don't forget about it and that you can label a bioreactor. So see the additional video. Best of luck. So at this stage, you know how important it is to always use your textbook to do past papers and check the marking scheme. So questions, questions. Best of luck.